EV race is the 2021 version of the 1960 space race. We have Elon Musk, BMW and Joe Biden all chasing the same targets which are not limited by imagination, engineering nor ingenuity, but supply chains and mining capacity, or more accurately, mining limitations. We're looking at the top six ASX battery miners and understanding the market dynamics behind lithium, nickel, cobalt, graphite, platinum group elements, alumina and manganese. Now half of these companies are up 300% for the year, so there's plenty of gains to be made in this space. This is Final Market Points, where we connect the leading market themes with the best performing companies for better trading. Like the video to support the channel, subscribe for updates and leave a comment to tell us the news behind your trading decisions. The greatest update in the EV mineral space comes from US President Joe Biden announcing the $2.3 trillion infrastructure spending package. It's aimed partially at shifting the US transportation system from gas and diesel based to battery powered and more to support renewable energies such as wind and solar that's over the carbon based sources like natural gas. The plan is big on promises and appears to benefit many sectors, but the details are still scant at this point and that's more specific on how the country will source the metals needed for repairing and replacing that traditional blacktop infrastructure and also the minerals that will feed the brand new mine to battery supply chain. One company getting ahead of the curve and securing that supply chain is BMW. To see more about how Tesla are approaching their supply chain concerns and the top ASX companies benefiting from it, click on the link in the description. Now, understanding BMW, they've signed a 285 million euro or 335 million US dollar contract to supply and source their lithium from the US based Livent. This company has a market cap of US $2.7 billion. Livent will supply lithium directly to BMW's battery cell manufacturers beginning in 2022. BMW said in late March the deal was part of its plans to accelerate its expansion of e-mobility in the coming years, which would increase the need for sustainable lithium supply for the use in their battery cells. Now by 2030, BMW plans that at least half of their global sales will come from all electric vehicles. This is extending on the back of BMW's lithium exposure that they have through a $540 million euro or 636 million US dollar. That's a lithium deal that's supplying coming from China's Gangfield Lithium, which was designed back in December of 2019, and that is to supply them with sustainable lithium hydroxide from the Australian hard rock deposits. This is going back to having a look at the lithium market of 2018, 2019, where they had that huge supply overhangs and plateauing demand. Since then, or looking from Bloomberg's numbers for the year of 2021 so far, we've seen $3.4 billion in equity offerings just in the American companies for the lithium exposures. The US has far greater demand curve and steepness than BMW itself, and the US as an economy has far broader applications. To see the ASX's best US miners, you can click on the link in the description below to see what those companies on the ASX are performing like. But the US are looking for more clean energy solutions. So we're looking at solar panels, wind turbines, electric vehicles, and lithium ion batteries, both for electric vehicles and grid scale storage that we've looked at previously on the back of the Texas storms and also what that did to the uranium market. You can click on the link for that one as well. For some materials like silicon, the supply curve is plentiful, but for others such as the rare earth neodym, which is used in wind turbines, as well as lithium, cobalt, graphite, and nickel that are used for batteries, as well as copper that's used for anything that involves electrical wiring. The supply chains need to shift, and that's because most of the metals used in the clean energy solution and electrification for the United States, that rely on imports. So looking back when Donald Trump was president, the US had planned to reverse its dependence on the foreign rivals, specifically China. China currently has the largest EV market and dominates the global battery supply chain. Under an executive order issued by Donald Trump, a report was published by the Interior Department in 2018, and they highlighted 35 minerals that are critical to the US national and economic security. 14 of those are 100% dependent upon imports. So we'll scroll through the lithium, nickel, and graphite production tables to see where that global supply chain is coming from. But Biden is also aware of America's vulnerabilities off the back of this report. And in late February 2021, the Biden administration 
Merchant announced that it will conduct a government review of US supply chains to seek to end the country's reliance on China as well as other overseas suppliers for these critical goods. Now, under Biden, we have seen strategic uranium reserves introduced in late 2020 and that constant stimulus with that greener edge coming through. You can click on the links in the description to understand how that impacted the uranium markets, as well as the ASX companies that have benefited from that movement. Now, looking back, we see that about 85% of the world's neodymium is concentrated in just a few Chinese mines. And then also understanding the world's cobalt production, the majority of that comes from the politically unstable Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC. The focus here is on the main minerals that are used for lithium-ion batteries. Lithium, graphite, cobalt, and nickel. Now, for an electric vehicle, this comprises about 30% of that car's cost, and that's going into that battery. And that requires lithium, graphite, cobalt, and so on, all of which are on the US critical minerals list. However, we also want to monitor the platinum group elements, as well as alumina and manganese, as they're also markets that are impacted by not only electric vehicles, but also the utility-based battery storage and energy storage that's coming to market, and we have seen more of that. So we're comparing not only the ones that are used, the big four ones, lithium, graphite, cobalt, and nickel, but looking at PGE, as well as alumina and manganese, to see which ASX companies are performing the best. You can click on the link to see the most recent PGE leaders as they are top six in there that have put on some strong returns. But looking at the US, we want to see, at a glance, the US Geological Survey's mine production data shows how little of these minerals actually come out of United States mines. For example, in 2020 and earlier, the only lithium production in the United States was from Albemarle's Silver Peak brine operations in Nevada. The actual amount's been withheld from the company, so we don't know the full supply that has come from the US, but it's definitely well below the top three producers, which are Australia at 40,000 tonnes, Chile at 18,000 tonnes, and China at 14,000 tonnes. Looking at the current identified lithium resources from the United States Geological Survey notes, they see that they've increased substantially due to the continually exploration, but out of the 86 million tonne total, only 7.2 9 million tons have been found in the United States and 2.9 million tons in Canada. There's no natural graphite and that's needed to make spherical graphite that's used in electric vehicles, battery anodes, and none of that was mined in the United States in 2020. Now the world conferred resources of recoverable graphite exceed 80 million tons, but the domestic sources are relatively small, using the quote from the United States Geological Surveys. The US mines only produced about 16,000 tonnes of nickel last year, and that's compared to 760,000 tonnes in Indonesia, 320,000 tonnes in the Philippines, 280,000 tonnes in Russia, being the top three nickel miners, and then also Canada managed an output of 150,000 tonnes. So we see that there are critical supply constraints in the US, and they do want to change that supply curve. And that is flowing through to what we're seeing on the Australian listed miners that are exposed to this space. So we come over and have a look at the top six miners exposed to electric vehicles on the ASX over the last month. Number six, we've got New World Resources. NWC is a ticker, 43% for the month. Now, as the results are coming, we're seeing that their mines are more copper focused, but you can see on the screen, they do have other exposures as well that are used for the electric vehicle market. Number five is Renescore Resources, a company that we have seen many times before, a very solid performer. We'll have a look at their quarterly and yearly performances in a minute, but they are 40.5% for the month. Now, they've responded to the increased inbound inquiries from major anode manufacturers. So RNU, Renescore, they have commenced work to investigate a substantial increase in their stage one production capacity beyond the currently planned 228,000 tonnes per annum of purified graphite. PSG. Number four, we've got Osman Resources, another company we have seen before. AOA is a ticker up 45% for the month. Now, they do have gold and copper mines in New South Wales, but they're also looking to understand the cobalt, nickel, zinc, and other aspects in their Broken Hill tenements out the back of New South Wales. Moving up to number three, Province Resources. These are all familiar names that we have surfaced many times before. 61% over the month. Now, the company is known as European Miner. We've looked at their connections to that European demand and being able to supply many of those battery manufacturers in the European continent. 
But what we do see is they're also known for their zero carbon emission and hydrogen perspective, but they do fit into this camp because they also have a nickel mine, albeit very low down in the portfolio and their list of importance, particularly what's grabbing headlines for them lately. Number two, Golden Mile Resources, G88 is that ticker. Just under 79% for the month, and we do see that Golden Mile have announced their nickel, copper, PGE, Platinum Group Elements, as well as their copper and zinc acquisition and a capital raising for that in the last month. Number one, we've got Energex, just under 80% for the month, recently have put on 100% in the last week or so. They're looking at yet another high and tight flag setup. To understand how to trade those, specifically for small cap miners on the ASX, you can click on the link in the description below to see that high and tight flag trading tutorial. But what we do know is that they have had significant volume spikes. That's critical for high and tight flags, but it does flag something else. They have said they've got nickel, copper, cobalt, and PGE mines but I wouldn't be trying to research anything on their website at the moment because it's pretty scant on information, which is similar to what's going on with the company. Now, there are, sign there are a lot of ASX announcements coming through. They are complying with what appears to be listing rule through. They're reporting things like change of registered office, business address, and other administrative announcements to the ASX. But the recent volume suggests that there is some movement afoot and investors are wanting more announcements to the ASX with regards to the tenements, what the updates are, and what's coming out of the ground. If we take this lens over to the quarter, we can see that New World Resources is up 32% over the quarter. Osman, 60%, as well as Golden Mile, both at 60.6%. Energex is 67% over the quarter. Renescore, RNU, little doubt as to why we've seen this name come up so many times in our reports in the last few months. 216%. And Province Resources as well, PRL at number one for the quarter, 244%. That's why we keep servicing these companies as top performers. Taking the lens out on a yearly perspective, Golden Mile comes in at number six, 148%. Number five, Osman Resources, 239% for the year. New World Resources, NWC, 277% for the year. Energex Limited, ENX, 299, rounding that up 300% for number three. Number two is 304% coming from Renescore Resources. And number one over the year is Province Resources PRL, 374% for the 12 months.